Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pomacher. Thanks for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't already, make sure you go on down and hit subscribe for me. I'll wait. That's as long as I'm waiting. Hit subscribe. We are here in downtown Melbourne for the Festival of the Arts hosted by Howard Allen Events. And we're hanging with Bonnie Shannis. Bonnie, thanks for hanging with us. Thank you. Uh, Bonnie is a sculptor of wire mesh uh, sculptures. Right. Designs. Okay. Um, unusual medium. Tell right. us about that. Where did that? You were sitting on the back patio and you look at the screen going, I bet you I can make that into a person. Right? Well, how does this happen? No, I was <laughs> when I was studying sculpture, I was studying um, figurative sculpture in cement. Okay. And we were given a material similar to the wire mesh that I'm using today um, to create like the, the armature okay. and cover that with cement. Like a framework. Okay. Yeah. And uh, basically I fell in love with the material itself. I didn't like the application of the cement, and you can't blame me for not liking cement. That's, no, I can't. Um, and I just liked the way the material kind of gave itself to the human form, and it was very light and interesting. So I kind of broke away from the cement, I broke away from the full round, and I took it my own direction. That's fantastic. Now, how long have you been sculpting? Uh, I've been sculpting about 12, 13 years, and okay. in this particular style, 11. 11 years. Okay, wow. So mm -hmm. just right off the bat, you found exactly what you wanted I to did. do. I did. I was lucky. Okay. Um, and so tell us a little bit about that process as opposed to sculpting in clay or creating out of cement. Or tell us a little okay. bit about the process. Well, um, in I guess in the wire mesh, what makes it a bit different is that as opposed to clay or stone where you're either relieving or adding, I'm just taking a flat form and manipulating it into shape. Okay. So I work with my hands, I suspend a large piece of mesh on an easel, and I work with my hands and each time I go back and refine the bulges and the shapes, and when I'm finally happy, if I'm finally happy, then I start forming the lines with a wooden knife and a pair of pliers. Wow. And then I, after that, I paint it. Wow, So okay, so um, as you said before, working in clay or working in a medium where you're either relieving or you're, or you're adding, mm -hmm. um, there's um, an immediacy to that, so, and I haven't been down there yet. I actually can't wait to see this stuff. Um, but the wire mesh work that I've seen, I mean, there's a lot of detail work in there. Yeah. But from where you're working, you kind of have to, you, you, it's a lot of back and forth. That's true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's consistently um, back and was forth. It, was it was it was it a difficult medium to learn to work in um, for that detail work? You know, I mean, actually, obviously, when you start when you started, you were working. This was a frame, and it was going to be a concrete uh, right. top over it. Yeah. But when you started working, and that was your finished product, was the wire. Right. Was that a difficult transition to make? Um, not really for me. Uh huh. I just it kind of like it just feels right. I can take a piece into my hands, and I know where I'm going with it. I have to because the material also has a memory. I need to know exactly what I'm doing. So it did. There was a lot of trial I was say, and when, error. You know, when I when I carve something out of a rock. It doesn't grow back. No, it doesn't grow back. When you're back. working with something that's already formed, yeah, it wants to it yeah. wants to be this flat piece of mesh. And yeah, you have to uh, make it conform. <laughs> I have to make it conform, and I also can't make a mistake. Because if I make a mistake, I can't iron it out, so to speak. So I have to throw it away and start from scratch. Wow. So that was a, a long learning process to kind of be able to plan exactly what I want in advance, even though I'm not starting necessarily from the face lines or the shoulder lines, I usually work from the center out. And your subjects tend to be all human form? Yes. Okay. Yes. I'm a figurative uh, artist, so... What, what drew you to the, to the human form mostly? Um, what draws me to people. And I love creating uh, the human form because the gestures, the fluidity, the movement, it has a language on its own, so it kind of doesn't matter who you are or where you're from, there's something that speaks from within us, and that's what I try to capture. It is, you know, we uh, we talk to so many artists and creators, um, and when we all get done, whatever story we're telling in our art, 
um, we're telling it to a person. Mm -hmm. and, and we do have our own body language and our own gestures and right. stances and ways that we communicate. So yeah. telling our story through the human form is mm -hmm. it's an amazing talent to have. Uh, I could draw stick people <laughs> badly. Uh, <laughs> but um, so uh, where are you going to be up the road? Where are you going from here? Well, I've uh, begun doing shows like this. I used to only do gallery shows in uh -huh. art centers. And about just over a year ago, I started doing um, these kind of art fairs, which... Thank you, because we, uh, one of the things that we love about these kind of things is that we're bringing art to everyone. Right. Um, and I think, I think we live in a time when that's more and more important. I mean, yeah. we're, we're, everybody's so busy now. Everybody's so busy working and paying and, and doing those things uh, that bringing the art out here to the mass, the arts to the masses is important. And that's why we do what we do on the show. So thank you for that. Um, we like to get inside your head a little bit, let your customers and the people who appreciate your art get to know you as a little bit. So what they've done is they've gone out to the World Wide Web, to social media, and they've grabbed some questions for me to ask that kind of make me into Dr. Phil. And we're going to tell people about you by telling them what you like. Okay. So, if you were a crayon, what color would you be? Purple. Purple. Okay, lively, a little bit dark, but still... Mysterious. Mysterious, that's mm -hmm. right. Um, art, contrary to what you all think on the World Wide Web, arts and entertainment is a profession. Sometimes we get paid for our work. And when that happens, what's your shopping weakness? What do you have art. to have? Art. More art. <laughs> <laughs> if I participate in this many shows and I see so many beautiful things and I have an appreciation, of course, of the effort and the story invested into it, so on a good weekend, I will usually walk away with an artwork of my own. That's fantastic. You know what? If you go to enough shows, you're going to need to go into the real estate business so you can get a house well, to put all your art in. <laughs> it's a yeah. bigger, bigger, bigger box of stuff. Um, if you join the circus, what would you be? I wouldn't join the circus. You would never no. join the circus, no. No, 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 no. However, she wants your pictures of you in the circus so she can make beautiful art. Um, when you're feeling down, you just, I just don't know what to do. What, what do you do to make yourself feel better? I make art. You make art. Uh -huh. Makes you feel better, makes us feel better because we get to see it. Everybody, when she's feeling down, everybody wins because she makes good art. Um, what kind of projects are you currently working on? What are you, you got a piece that you're working on? That you're I have several pieces that I work simultaneously on different series and different pieces. I'm participating um, in Art Expo in New York in a month, so I have to create very large pieces because of the display that I'm going to wow. have there. Wow, that's fantastic. So. See, good stuff. Oh, I get the card that says I gotta wrap it up. I don't like it when that happens because we're chatting. We're trying to visit. And but she's gonna go make some amazing art and she's gonna have art out there for our customers to buy today. So as we wrap it up, we're gonna say a special thanks to our friends at Something Unique Magazine, the Florida Book News, Wordfire Press, Space Coast Comics, and Famous Faces and Funnies, as well as the great folks at Howard Allen Events for having us down here at the Melbourne Festival of the Arts. I'm GW Pomacher. We've been hanging with Bonnie Shannis, a wire mesh sculptor. Uh, we're gonna spin some pictures up some of her work so you guys can see that it's amazing stuff uh look down below for uh links in the description to find your more work online and where she's going to be coming up the road remember folks if you haven't already subscribe log on tune in and see who we're hanging with next